Hi, this is Nell, illustrator slash animator slash generic creative and a family daughter. Mother's Day is celebrated on May 10th in Mexico. My mom had recently enrolled into a yoga class and was super excited about it, so I thought a personalized yoga mat would be the perfect gift for her this year. It is not uncommon for me to gift her personalized items showcasing what she loves most, so a yoga mat with all my furry brothers and sisters was of course a given. But given my TikTok algorithm, for some reason decided to randomly shower my feed with the stereograms. You know, those funky patterns where you discover an image if you play your eyesight right? I decided that I might give it a go and create a pattern with a hidden message for her. So, if you have a millennial and up special someone and want to give them a creative gift with a dash of 90s nostalgia, keep watching! Here's how. The first thing we do is to open a new document. I am going for the classic letter size right now, although this is just for testing purposes. We divide the screen and create another document of 1024 pixels square. Press Ctrl-1 to invert the canvas from white to black, drag the black canvas from our second document to the one we created first, right-click on the layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Then we drag it to the upper left corner and, pressing Ctrl Shift, duplicate and align tile instances of our smart object. Then we can choose any of the smart object instance layers, double click over the icon, and this will open a new window that will take us inside the smart object. In this document, we can start doodling. As soon as we save the changes on this new document, we will see the first document we created gets updated with the changes and, since we tiled many instances of the smart object, we can see our pattern coming to life. Now, to ensure our pattern looks seamless, we choose the Offset option from the Filter menu, enter a value of 512 pixels in each box, hit OK and begin to fill in the negative spaces. If you can't draw or don't feel like drawing your pattern, this process works with any image you want. You just import it into your smart object document and follow the same procedure. With photos, you might benefit from the Content Aware Fill option. You select the areas that need to look seamless and let the program do its magic. Rinse and repeat until you are satisfied with your texture. The reason why I initially made my document 1024 by 1024 was because I wanted to save myself some time using Stable Diffusion to create my pattern, since this is the measure the AI program works with the best. This process is entirely optional. You can make your smart object any measure you want if you are not using AI. Once in Stable Diffusion, we go to the Image to Image tab and upload our original sketch artwork, then adjust the output size to 1024 by 1024, then the batch count to 3 to have 3 variations, and then we write the prompt. Reduce the denoise strength so it gets closer to the image we uploaded, hit Generate, and let AI propose more render variations of our sketch. We can repeat the process by sending one of the generations to the Image to Image tab again using the icons below. Now, this is used for the backdrop. As I mentioned earlier, the idea is to capture my mother's pets, which are unique and peculiar, each in their own way. AI can't really help me with that. Or it, it can, but it will need super specific guidelines that it will make it way more time consuming than just straight up painting them myself, so that's what I did trying to capture the quirkiness of each pet. Once we have our pattern ready, we open a document with the size of the yoga mat and adjust the pattern at exactly two tiles height. We zoom at 100% to check there are no gaps and merge both tiles down. Then, we complete the pattern horizontally using the same process, but before merging, we drag a guide from the ruler at the left and place it where each tile ends. Once we're done, we bring over a second image with a design we want hidden inside the image, which consists in a black and white depth map where the white areas will get pushed forward in the 3D space. 
Once we are happy with the arrangement, we save this depth map on a new document and collapse the layers. Then open the previous document in a way we have both documents open, the one with just the depth map and the one with just the pattern. We move to the file with the depth map and create a new layer where we will cover with a blank canvas all the tile sections except the first. We save the document changes, then we move to the document with the pattern, duplicate the layer and choose displays from the filter menu under distort. I put a value of 15 pixels but you can experiment to see which one looks the best. Then hit OK and choose the Photoshop file with the depth map we have opened in the other window. Click open and once we notice our document displaces slightly, we select the first tile and press Ctrl J to create a new layer with just this tile in. Then duplicate this tile until it covers the whole document and once done, we merge all the new tiles down. Then we come back to our depth map document and cover all the tiles except the second one. Save the changes and get back to a pattern document. Displace the image we recently merged like we did before. Once done, select the second tile, Ctrl J to create a new layer with just this tile. Duplicate said layer and cover all document to the right, then merge them all. Then rinse and repeat. We come back to the depth map document to cover it all except the third tile, then back to our pattern, displace, new layer with the third tile, duplicate it to cover all the right side, merge down, back to our depth map, uncover just the fourth tile, and so on, and so on. You might notice in the video that the more we advance on the tiles, the more I uncover them slightly opposite towards the left. That's because the 3D image is coming with weird gaps between tiles, if I just follow the divisions exactly as they are. No idea why. Something to do with the displacement, I assume, but I tried this fix intuitively and it worked. They are not exactly upset at 15 pixels. I kind of use eyeball it, so apologies if I don't know why it works, but well, it does. Uh, if you know why, let me know in the comments. So yeah, once the pattern is complete, it is time to choose a print-on-demand service. I had prepared a walkthrough on how to do it in Society6, which was the print of the man service platform I had been with for the last 9 years, and had worked wonderfully every time. Uh, except this time was not the case. So, my yoga mat file was ready and uploaded into Society6. When the time to pay arrived, Stripe kept rejecting my payment even after I tried with two different cards from two different banks. So, I gave up and purchased from Sassel instead. No, I don't know if it was because of the massive file I uploaded and ended up not purchasing with them, but two days later I received two emails from Society6, the first stating I had a copyright strike, and the second stating that my account was suspended from the service. After nine years of loyalty, they dropped me just like that. No warning, no call-out email asking me to dispute the claim or anything or what seemed a copyright strike that was oddly timed and equally oddly allocated. My artistic touchy-feely side felt betrayed, especially because Society6 was largely dropped by artists when Society6 introduced their paid tiers plan, and unlike most of them, I did choose to subscribe. But then my rational side kicked in and made me realize this actually ended up playing in my favor. On retrospect, I think I know why Society6 decided to switch to a subscription plan, and that probably has to do with that tsunami of AI-generated images that people for sure began to upload to print-on-demand services everywhere after falling for the get-rich-quick schemes that got popular a while ago, and since it is a game of numbers, they probably floated their servers, so Society6 had to restrict the influx somehow. Since now there is more competition than ever, that month when they deleted my account was going to be the first month I will have to pay them as opposed to have the monthly fee discounted from my earnings. They cancelled my account right before that, so I remained in green numbers during all my stay with them. After my Tochi Feely side engaged in back and forth communication with Society Seek staff about the unfairness of the account suspension, they decided they would give me a second chance and restored my account and subscription. And I didn't accept the offer this time. I no longer feel safe under the new management, and I am not positive I am going to sell as I used to in there anymore, so if you have recommendations of print of demand services, let me know in the comments. 
So this will be it. Very stereographic creation and have a fantastic day.